so the last video we managed to make a video screen model entity with this function and in this video what we're going to do is we're going to place that into the real world so create a function called start plane detection i'm going to take the ar view here and set automatic configuration to true all right so now before we proceed we need to import the ar kit foundation we haven't done that yet so let us create a configuration variable and this would be an AR world tracking configuration. And we're going to set plane detection to horizontal because we want to detect the surface of a table. That's where we'll place our screen. And then we're going to set automatic environment texturing. All right, so that should be good to go. Finally, we're going to take the AR view, get access to its session, and run the session with the current configuration and without any options. So this would fire off the AR kit to run horizontal plane detection right when the app starts. So let's call that here, start plane detection. So the next thing what we want to do is we want to detect when the user taps on a screen and place the 3D object in the corresponding 3D location in the real world. So for that, I'm gonna create another function called start tap detection. And let's create that here. I'm gonna take the AR view again and add a gesture recognizer and this would be a UI tap gesture recognizer and this would accept a target and the target would be self, the current AR view and the action would be a selector or an objective C function. So again, check out my other videos for more details but here we'll pass on a handle tap method which accepts this input a recognizer and this would be the callback method that's called every time a user taps. And that's where we can get access to the 2D point of the tab location. So let's define that callback function right below here. Because it's an object to C function, again, just to remind you, you have to add the objc mark and function, and this will be handle tab, which has input recognizer, which is of type UI tab gesture recognizer. So now in here, what we want to do is we want to get the tab location, which is a 2D coordinate. Tab location. And we can get the 2D location by using the recognizer variable dot location in the AR view. And then once we have this 2D coordinate, what we can do is do a raycast from the 2D coordinate to get the corresponding 3D point in the real world where we want to place the TV screen. So again, plenty of videos I've done on this. Check out my video on raycasting if you're interested. So over here, I'm going to store the results of a raycast in a results variable and start a raycast from the AR view using the raycast function and this would be from the 2D point on the screen that we detected the tap location and allowing estimated plane and the alignment would be horizontal planes great so this would cast a raycast from the tap location on the screen and from the results we can get access to the 3D location in the real world first let's check if there is a result so this would be the first result from the results, we'll get the first uh, raycast result that we got. And with this raycast result, we can get access to the 3D point in the real world where we want to place the screen. So let's get access to that and store it inside world position. And this would be uh, first result dot world transform dot columns dot three. So this would be the 3D XYZ coordinates of the point where we want to place the screen on next thing what we're going to do is we're going to place the video screen in that position for this we're going to create another function let's close this and name it place screen and this would take us input the screen 3d model which would be of type model entity then a world position where we want to place it at this would be a type a 3d vector in here what we want to do is First, we want to take this 3D model and attach it into an anchor. Anchors are the locks in virtual worlds. And then we will tie our 3D model to the anchor and then we'll add the anchor to the ARC. So first, let's create the anchor. And this would be an anchor entity, which accepts as input a position in the real world where we want to place the anchor at to lock stuff there. So the position here would be the world position that we passed as input. And then what we can do is attach the 3D model of the screen to this anchor so that it will get stuck there. So let's take the anchor and attach add child 
and the child would be the screen model. Finally, we can add this anchor to the scene. So again, get access to the AR view, get the scene, and add anchor. And this would be the anchor that we created here. Simple. So now we got the anchor with the 3D model of the screen attached to the AR scene, AR view. So now let's go back to our handle tap method. After we got our world position, we can place the screen at that world position. So let's create place screen. The screen, oh, we don't have the screen yet. We only have the world position. So we'll just pass the world position there. And for the screen, which is a model entity, remember in our previous video, that's what we created this function for. The create video screen function returns a model entity, which has the screen plane with the video materials to play the video right when it starts. So right here, what we're going to do is we're going to create the video screen. Let video screen equals create video screen, which returns a model entity. And we can define the width and height of the screen that we want here, say 40 centimeters and 20 centimeters of height. Uh, you can play around with whatever values you want. And now I can pause that. And now we should be placing the video screen at the world position where we tapped on. Now there's one more thing that we need to do before we can run this project. Actually two more things. So the first thing we want to do is if we just run it like this, what will happen is that the screen will be placed on the table vertically, but it will be part way below the table. So what we want to do is we want to shift the screen above by half the screen height so that it will be placed just on top of the table. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the video screen and set position. The position would be a 3D vector. So we're going to create a sim D3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the screen height, which is 0.2 here and divide that by two so that the screen will be shifted by half its height so, and that will allow it to be placed right on top of the table and not have any of it going below. Awesome, so with the video screen and its position set right, we then place the video screen at the position, at the world position. And the last thing that we need to do then is we want to install gestures so that we can manipulate the screen while in AR and uh, position it to whatever view that we want. Right, so let's create a function for installing gestures then. So I'm gonna name a function called install gestures. And we want to install gestures on a specific model or model entity. Install gestures on a model. This would be of type model entity. And this would return nothing. It would simply install and enable gestures. First, what we want to do is we want to add collision shapes to our model entity so that it would be interactable. Make sure you do this. Take model and add collision shapes. No, generate collision shapes and set recursive to true. So now that our model is intractable, it's very simple. What we do is take the AR view, install gestures for an object that has collision, i.e. collision shapes. So this would be the model here, which we did that. And we can also define an option and define what kind of gestures we want to enable. And I'm just gonna allow rotation and scale. So let's go back to our handle tab method then. And right after we've placed the screen onto the world position, let's enable the gestures by simply ins calling install gestures and installing it on our video screen model entity. Now if we click build and run, you'll see some errors. Let's fix that. So first error here, it says cannot convert value of type simd float 4 to expected argument simd 3 So I know why that is. Because the world position that we passed here, if we go here and check, it's a simd float 4 So we need to convert it into a 3D vector. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use this function. simd make float 3 and wrap this inside. And now if we check, it's a 3D vector. So now if we click build, that error should go. Awesome. So now let's finish the next errors. So if you go into our create video screen function, value of optional type must be unwrapped. Okay, so let's just force unwrap this because we know there is a video here. And now if you click build, that should go away. And finally, in the create video materials function, missing return. Ah, that's obvious. <laughs> and we need to return the video material here in this function. So we're going to return this video material. And now if you click build, it should show no errors. And now if you click play, it should work.